Finally, an alien movie where they're not complete assholes! Hello and welcome back to another Midnight Showing. As always, I'm Kelly. I'm DJ. And we just got out of The Arrival. This is the first one we came after we came back from Anime Banzai. <laughs> it's... We're still adjusting to life not on vacation. <laughs> yes. Um, this is... Wow. This this movie is good. Uh, Non-spoiler version, non-details or anything. This movie is... A thinking man's movie. It's really good. It's thought broken. Brings up a lot of questions. A lot of really cool ideas. The acting from the three people that actually matter in this movie is on point. And yeah, I could easily recommend this movie inside of a inside of a theater watch. Oh yeah, it's it's really good. Um, it got 100% on Rotten Tomatoes <laughs> before it even hit theaters from the critics alone. Yeah, it's down to a 96 now. But it's still pretty good, and it's certified fresh. Mm -hmm. So that's... I, I, I wonder what's going to happen after the general audience is hit, though, because, yeah. you know, general... The, look at the user... Excuse me. The user score or anything like that, because, yeah, I think it's going to drop a bit inside the user ratings and maybe yeah. even the critics, maybe go down to, like, maybe, like, the upper 80s, because this is, there's there are things about this that it demands that you think, which leaves you up to the viewers, like... Us, yeah. Who is? Oh crap! We just thought. Yeah. Some of your stuff doesn't make much sense. Yeah, I felt <laughs> like it was gonna like take its time or whatever, and maybe the last forty-five minutes or whatever they're gonna show the aliens. They get right to it. Yeah. Like they have this backstory with uh, Amy Adams, who's the main chick. Well, that that and... might actually be spoilers going into that. No. Okay. <laughs> so, just the opening alone, it establishes Amy Adams as the character. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm going with. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. Yeah, th th it's kind of hard to discuss this one without, you know, heavy-duty spoilers. Yeah. Especially with the twist that throws at you at the end, which, yeah, it's classified. I'm classifying yeah. it as a twist. So, I'm just going to describe the basic plot. Amy Adams is a linguist language professor at gen enter generic college name here <laughs> yeah i think that she's she's actually you know a little bit more i think it's like the science of language you yeah know, she's not just you know a translator or anything like that she actually studies the history of the languages and why certain things evolved in certain ways she actually goes into like the history of why you know dis became into our came into our dictionary you know stuff like that you know words origins and things like that so she's hired on by the military after 12 alien ships just decided to land in random areas. Yeah, <laughs> it drew, we were thinking, it kind of drew parallels from 9-11. <laughs> yeah, well, where everyone's people, reactions. Where people just stop, like everyone's, like, wherever else the rest of our students are, there's like four or five other <laughs> kids in there, and their phones keep start going off one by one and one of them says can you turn the tv on to a news just, just, network just, just turn it on turn, turn it on now that's yeah but that's how everyone basically reacted when 9 11 happened just like shock and awe of everything so yeah this, now that you have the general premise i think let's go into the actual meat of this with so going into the good of this movie as I said, the acting is on point from the three people that matter, and I, I use that because everyone else is minor at best. It's Amy Adams, Jeremy Renner, and Forrest Whitaker. Those yeah. are the three people that matter in this movie. Oh, Jeremy Renner is always fun. Yes, <laughs> he is fun, and he does bring a lot of humanity to his character. He's not the you know the general badass that he you know the com comical badass he usually plays. I can be a co a comical badass <laughs> when you're trying to make peace. With alien Cthulhu. Cthulhu. <laughs> yes, these mo these aliens are like Cthulhu versions of the Adams family hands. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's it's they're great designs. It's just really really out there. They're, yeah, they communicate. Th these are 
They're These very are truly alien. They're very <laughs> non-humanoid, which is a nice change of pace. Mm. And as I said, Amy Adams is playing a very reserved character. You know, the trailer kind of make her look and act like Lois Lane a bit. Inside of this movie, though, she's like far from that. I'm gonna get that into that when <laughs> we get to the bad. Yeah, th th there's kind of a flip side to that, and that's kind of touching on it. But she's actually playing a very, very broken person, <sighs> or at least breaking person. I guess would be better to avoid the spoiler of it until we actually have to talk about it in the negatives. And somebody thought dealing with aliens was gonna help that. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> Forrest Whitaker, he's playing the basic, he's just playing a colonel. He's doing his job, and he's trying his best to work with both sides. He's got the bureaucratic assholes who are trying to, well, just want to blow the shit up. Because they're scared and they want to appease the people. Meanwhile, he's working with a team who's actually trying to fix the situation. He plays a very good balance inside of this. And he knows when to really, you know, step on it hard ass and when to back off let them do what they're doing they need to do what they're doing yeah <laughs> um, also the questions it brings up are very very good because this movie okay it's kind of a spoiler but it's kind of hard to talk about it without actually spoiling it the last 45 minutes brings in a time travel element to it oh or or at least a, a time viewing element it, it's very debatable on whether it's actually time travel or time viewing or just being able to predict the future it, it's kind of unclear and that's something we will talk about in a second yeah like i was saying this is not a movie you need to you want to go to when it's late at night and you're about to fall asleep and you, can't pay attention. You need to be paying attention. You need attention. your brain. <laughs> and, for, and considering all the schlock that we have to see or are going to see, because we saw our first poster for fucking Fifty Shades of Grey too, Fifty Shades Darker. Mm. Yeah. And you are going to that movie. Mm. I am getting this on camera right now. You are going to that movie. <laughs> you are not making me go to that shit alone. <laughs> I told you not to go to the first one. I don't care. <laughs> and now you know why. <laughs> but it, it's... This movie really demands your attention, thinks about it, brings up questions of, you know, fate versus predestination, and kind of really does set it in motion that we are stuck inside of a future that... Or are we stuck inside of a time where we... Are, we have no real choice because things are preordained by us being inside of them and this ability basically helps shape the future into the peace that we all need and will have eventually. And it also does show the downsides of that in more spoilers with uh, Amy Adams' character inside of this. And it's, it's very well done. It's extremely, extremely extremely well done yeah the people react to these aliens like a normal person would one guy vomits yeah. amy adams is just dumbfounded at she, what the hell just happened she is so scared that she is literally just shaking there's no like music score or whatever you just hear the noises behind you Ra random electronics uh like the uh god there's what's that instrument called the one that like senses exactly how high or position that your hand is above it. Was it the theremin? Theremin. I think that's what it is. Yeah. You know, it's it's a lot of noises from something like that, and there's no real you know big score or bombastic thing. It's complete mood noises, and it's off-putting to say the least. And that's what it's going for, and it's it's it really is just perfect in that regard. Yeah. And it really does deserve a high rating on Rotten Tomatoes, but... I said this, so I said this before, uh, or like after when we came out of the movie, because I wanted to save it for this, but this is, I was skeptical from the like first couple trailers that I saw, because the whole thing looks drabbed out and like gray <laughs> at least they made it where it actually looked cloudy like a storm was coming in their setting or whatever yeah and the fact that it's amy adams as one of the main roles 
I kept getting Batman v Superman, or not, or Man of Steel vibes from this. Yeah, this this looks a lot like Man of Steel, and that's not really a compliment to this movie because, you know, what's wrong with color? Exactly. Does does everything need to have a gray filter? I mean, for fuck's sake, the army are in camos that in real life would look bright green. Why do they look like they're black? <laughs> I, I don't get this. You know, the most colorful thing on screen are their hazmat suits, which are just orange, because it doesn't matter what filter you put over an orange, it's gonna show like it's orange. <laughs> and especially when you have the gray filter on everything in this movie. Gray, white, white and black filters everywhere. You know, there's no... Something like orange is gonna pop out and seem unnatural. Maybe that's what they were going for, but for fuck's sake, I would have preferred some color, especially when they got to the alien reveal. They're, they're puke green. There's no other color we could have here? <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, you know, they're trying to go for realistic, and, well, scientists said that this would be a more realistic color for some, for a, what do they call them, heplopods? Hypolopods? Like, Something like that. It's like seven... It means seven arms, it's like yeah, heptilopods or whatever. Yeah, it's it, you know, it probably is a more realistic thing, but why not make them a little more alien by make giving them something that shouldn't exist? You know, like a fluorescent green. Mm -hmm. Make it really stand out that these things are not from our. It's it's a that I just find really really annoying because it really does happen a lot, especially with Warner Brothers films these days. It's like everything's got to have that stupid gray filter on it. Well, if it's not realistic enough, we can't enjoy it enough. For fuck's sake, it's color. <laughs> Let there be color. That's all I'm asking. <laughs> and, you know, while we're on the complaining train, let's get into some of the shit that doesn't make sense in this movie. <laughs> I, I kind of alluded to it before. It, this is a very well thought out movie. But here's the problem. Everything that it's thought out is a paradox. <laughs> it's one of the biggest paradoxes you will ever see because this whole situation would not have been able to be resolved unless she could see the future and yes that's what Amy Adams starts doing is seeing the future in the form of movie style flashbacks and you don't know that they're that she's seeing the future or anything until the last it's dropped on you in this plot twist in the last like 30 minutes of the movie what you think is like uh, flashbacks that are showing her character how she was broken. No, they're actually flash forwards that she never acknowledges that something's happening to her. Even though she's supposed to be acknowledging these. And the whole climax of the movie depends that she actually is able to utilize this ability. So, what's going on? <laughs> it's a paradox. She never would be able to see the future if the aliens hadn't arrived. She wouldn't be able to stop this attack and save humanity and unite everybody without this ability that she got from the aliens, which only would have come out if the aliens had shown up. Now, the aliens are non-linear, and they don't see time that way. So... They, they talk about maybe rewriting re her brain because she's starting to understand this language, but that was a dream sequence or not because the aliens were suddenly inside of her bedroom. This doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I thought that was just a weird nightmare, like them getting into their heads and but, I thought the aliens actually were going to be the villains. Yeah, but, but was it a nightmare? We don't know because apparently <laughs> she can see the future because they gave her a special language thing that allowed, once she actually understood it, her mind start, started working in a way that she could actually see the future with it. It's it's really complicated, convoluted, and it's one giant paradox. You know, th this whole concept was basically done inside of uh, a Ben Affleck movie back in like 2004, 2006 called uh, Paycheck. You ever, you ever see that one? Paycheck. Nope. Ben Affleck in there is a reverse engineer, and he gets hired to uh, build something. But his little gimmick is that he doesn't like... Uh, when he goes into a project, he goes completely into a project, and then he wipes his memory of the entire project, only really taking the payment. So all he remembers is the... Uh, basically, he doesn't remember the work. He just remembers all the money and all the things he did with the money, kind of living in highlights type thing. 
after working on a secret project, which was only supposed to be uh, two years, but ended up being like six. No, no, it was like three months, but it ended up being uh, like three years. Uh, he gets arrested by the FBI. It turns out he was working on a device to see the future. No. And uh, now that they have this device, you know, everything is preordained, which ends up just killing off the entire human race. You know, they foresee a plague. They round up all the people who would have, uh, who started the plague to try to prevent it, only to create a plague themselves because those people were in the same area for too long. You know, uh, the uh, the machines foresee is a war, so we commit first strike against the nation to try to prevent a war. Yep. You know, it, it that's basically what this movie is doing, but instead of you know everybody dies, everybody lives. Because one woman could apparently see a man's wife's last words. It's. There's no resolution to this pop paradox, and there's no way that the aliens would be able to foresee that in 3,000 years they would need humanity's help without there being some kind of resolution to this paradox. It's, it's the thing about this movie. You, you got me to think about it. And this is a thinking man's movie, and it brings up a lot of really important questions and a lot of really cool ideas, but now you've got me thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> so now I've got to dissect it. And yeah. by dissecting it, you realize it doesn't make sense. Yeah, I would say it sounds good on paper, but in execution, you're going to run into some plot holes. Well, at some point you did have it on paper, because yeah. you had to write the script at some, uh, uh, at some and, point. And I think this was actually based on a book. I just remember seeing the arrival inside the book stand at Target. Really? So it, 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 I'm, it might be a book also. So maybe it worked better in there and was better explained. Maybe there was a detail left out. I don't know. But from oh. a film perspective, there's just too many things that don't add up. Well, if it is based on a book, then we can see, <laughs> see it on the dome. Yes. <laughs> see it on Lost in Adaptation. Well, he's got the next year of reviews already lined up, so we'll see how long it takes him to actually get to this. Yeah. I'm still hoping he's going to do Jack Reacher for, uh, sometime soon, because I want him to do it. Hey, Dom. <laughs> Free plug. <laughs> Lost in Adaptation. The Dom. And he's almost done with Harry Potter month, so please go do that. Yep. <laughs> oh, just, what other negatives are there inside this film? There was a couple other ones I was thinking about on the way out of the theater. Damn it, I can't think of them now. It's... I can't really think of them anymore. It's just, it's just, the things that don't add up don't make sense. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, the other one that I really wanted to mention. This whole movie is basically uh, the movie Contact from, like, 1996, 1995, 1996. It, it's with Matthew McConaughey, James Wood, and, uh, uh, what's her name? Dang it, I can't remember her name either. But yeah, this whole movie is basically contact. The aliens come down, they give humanity a bunch of uh, plans that we have to decipher, which turns out to be some kind of machine or plot device so they can end up talking to them and making peace with them. The difference is, once again, in the end ending. This one goes with the happy-go-lucky ending. And, oh, well, everything's going to be fine. The journey is much important, more important than the destination. We're all going to be mm -hmm. survive. Humanity is awesome. Uh, inside of Contact, you know, everything that she ex experienced inside of the event, you know, was explainable by science that, you know, time dilation and stuff like that, because you went away from Earth and then came instantly back, so you're only gone for maybe a second, but you experienced like 18 hours. Uh, <laughs> you essentially... So, so everyone just starts getting mad at her and, and questioning, what you saw was completely fake and this was a giant hoax, wasn't it? And she's like, no, it's faith and belief. I knew what I saw <laughs> happened and it's true and you have to believe me too. You know, That's the difference between the two movies. But they're essentially the same thing. You plot just, point for plot point. You just gave a review of three movies <laughs> in one video. <laughs> yeah, yes, I did. But it's it's got a contrast... It, 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 because it's, this movie is so similar to these other movies that I've seen. It's just... Ah! Oh, this is what happens when you get me thinking. <laughs> ah! And that's really the problem, is that it wants you to think, but if you think about it too hard, yeah, it kind of ruins the experience for you. Exactly. So, yeah, you got any more negatives? Um, nope, that's about it. Just time travel 
hurts my head. This yes. is this is why I stopped watching The Flash because <laughs> it began to hurt my head really bad. <laughs> oh, wait until you get see, wait until you see season three. Doctor Who. I love David Tennant. He's the eleventh Doctor. Is my favorite. Uh, David Tennant was ten. Ten. Yeah. Eleven was uh, Matt Smith. Yeah. And then, techni- well, technically, technically David Tennant is eleven. War Doctor. Yeah, let's just re- write into someone like that because we couldn't get a hold of Christopher Eccleston <laughs> for a freaking uh, anniversary. Yeah, every time they explain the plot twist in these episodes in like a one-parter or like a three-parter like the master or whatever. Yeah. It time- begins to hurt your head. <laughs> time travel. Yeah, it's it's complicated. So, yeah, I mean, I think we basically said everything we're going to say. So, let's move on to... I would totally see this in theater, maybe on Netflix. Maybe I'll get it for my dad if he's interested for, like, his birthday or whatever. Mm-hmm. Whenever it decides to come out. It'll probably be about February next year. Yeah, my parents would love this movie. It, I think that this is a thinking man's movie. They think that when you're, you know, the older you are, you're, the more you depreciate something like this. And I could recommend to see this in theater. I'm not going to give it a must-see recommendation because... I know that there are people out there that are not going to like this movie. You know, there, it demands that you think, and there's a lot of people who go to movies not to think. And if you do go to the theater to think, you may find that you hate this movie or just don't like it. Kind of like, I think that the movie is a good, well-made movie that had an idea and executed it. It just needed some more tweaking to try to fill in the gaps. Maybe a little bit more exhibition here. Maybe a little something a little more visual here so that people could piece things together a little bit more. Maybe a little bit more foreshadowing. And it, it does depend that you watch it like a movie and assume that these sequences where, she, where Amy Adams is talking to her daughter are flashbacks instead of flash forwards because that's where the big part of the twist comes in. And it tries to take advantage of that, but if you're not very big on movie going yeah you're not going to catch on and it's going to be confusing i'll give it a mu- i'll i'll give it a see it in theaters recommendation that if you're going to uh, that this is one that's worth going to but you have to know going into it that you're going to be thinking <laughs> and if you if you don't want to do that you're there's much better films to go see right now <laughs> i mean seriously doctor strange has a must see recommendation for me mm-hmm. go see that one before you go see this one <laughs> But, yeah, honestly, that's my final verdict. So, yeah, that's it from us. Did you enjoy Arrival? Tell us what you thought about it in the comments below. Maybe we'll get some healthy discussion going. As always, be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more. Follow us on social networking. All of it, like Facebook and Twitter and Twitch. That's a social Facebooking, right? I don't, yeah, I think. I think they're starting to turn it into one. Yeah. I don't know, until they actually give us Twitch where we're going to be prancing around naked while we play games. <laughs> it's working for nobody. The, it's working. You just lost 100 <laughs> subscribers, followers, and I'm pretty sure you don't even have that much yet. It, wor- <laughs> it works perfectly good for female gamers, man. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, as always, I'm Kelly. I'm DJ. We'll see you all next time.